Today is day three of the Novena to St. Joseph the Workman. And it's appropriate today, you might hear some rumbling noises in the background, it's appropriate today that we have construction work going on here at the church in our bell tower. And that's appropriate too, because as you know, in our bell tower here at St. Stephen's is a staircase going up to our choir loft. So I want to recall to you a story today that goes back about 160, 70 years to 1852 in Santa Fe, New Mexico, quite a long ways away from here in Portland, Oregon. Santa Fe, New Mexico, the bishop in 1852 had invited a group of Loretto sisters from Kentucky to open a school for girls. And so the bishop had a beautiful chapel built for the sisters. And when they arrived, there was a problem. You see, there was a choir loft in the chapel. And no way to get up to the choir loft. There was no staircase. The architect had left this out of the design. Unfortunately, by this time, the architect was already dead. And so the sisters spoke to the builder about putting up a staircase. Well, the builder told the sisters it really was not possible. The chapel was too small, and there would be no way to build a staircase up to the choir loft. So the builder recommended that the choir loft be simply taken out. Well, the sisters didn't want to do that. So the sisters had a better idea. Pray a novena to St. Joseph the Carpenter. All right. So they prayed a novena to St. Joseph the Carpenter. And then what happened? A man showed up at the door, offering to build them a staircase. One condition, he would be given total privacy. Well, okay. So the man spent three months in total privacy, and at the end of those three months, he departed. He never asked for any money, and he did not reveal who he was to the sisters. But when the sisters came into the chapel, there was a beautiful winding staircase of spruce wood, and it is a type of wood that is not, um, not local. Uh, this is not a type of wood they have there in New Mexico. The construction of the staircase was also mysterious because it seemed to have nothing holding it up, and yet it was sound and secure. And so this came to be known as the miraculous staircase. Well, Mother Superior uh, sent out a word to find this man who had built the staircase, and he was never found. And so, it was attributed to St. Joseph himself, that it was St. Joseph himself who appeared, who built the staircase, and then disappeared, having asked for no payment. But perhaps the payment was the novena itself. Now maybe you have something that you'd like to pray for during this novena. We're on day three of the novena. Have you thought? of what you wish to ask St. Joseph to obtain for you from God. It may be that you don't notice how he answers your prayer right at, right at first. It may be that you'll never know how your prayer was answered. But I'll tell you this, your prayer will be answered. And it may be that you ask for this or you ask for that, but that the real answer to your prayer is that you will be changed. You will be changed by a life of prayer. You will be changed. Your life will be transformed. Things will begin to go better. Or maybe they'll begin to go worse, but in a better way. Sometimes God answers our prayers by making our life tough. And that's the only way that he can bring about growth and holiness, to make things tough. And so we have to give thanks to God when things are difficult and keep praying. 
With that in mind, let us pray day three of our Novena to St. Joseph from the Rakolta, prayer number 471, which is called the Go to Joseph Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the mysteries of this veil of tears, to whom shall we have recourse, if not to thee, to whom thy beloved spouse Mary entrusted all her rich treasures, that thou mightest keep them to our advantage? Go to my spouse Joseph, Mary seems to say to us, and he will comfort you. He will deliver you from the misfortunes which now oppress you and will make you happy and contented. Do thou have pity on us, therefore, O Joseph, have pity on us. Through that love which thou didst cherish toward a spouse so worthy and so amiable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We are fully conscious that we have offended the justice of God by our sins and deserve his most severe chastisements. Now, what shall be our place of refuge? In what haven shall we find ourselves in safety? Go to Joseph, Jesus seems to say to us. Go to Joseph in whom I was well pleased and whom I had for my foster father. To him as to a father, I have communicated all power that he may use it for your good according to his own desire. Pity us therefore, O blessed Joseph, pity us for the great love thou didst bear toward a son so admirable and so dear. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Unhappily, the sins we have committed call down upon us the heaviest scourges. This we must confess. In what ark shall we take refuge in order to be saved? Where shall we find the blessed rainbow that shall give us comfort and hope in the midst of our affliction? Go to Joseph, the eternal father, seems to say to us. Go to him who took my place on earth with regard to my son made man. I entrusted to his keeping my son, who is the unfailing source of grace. Every grace, therefore, is in his hand. Pity us then, dear Joseph, pity us by thy great love for Almighty God, who hath been so generous to thee. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We continue with the Memorare to St. Joseph. Prayer number 472. Remember, O most pure spouse of the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, my beloved patron, that never hath it been heard that anyone invoked thy patronage and sought thine aid without being comforted. 
Inspired by this confidence, I come to thee and fervently commend myself to thee. Ah, despise not my petition, dear foster father of our Redeemer, but accept it graciously. Amen. And now we turn to the supplement, prayer number 17, the prayer to St. Joseph Workman, to be recited by Workman, composed by Pope Pius XII. O glorious patriarch, Saint Joseph, humble and just artisan of Nazareth, thou hast given to all Christians and particularly to us an example of a perfect life through diligent labor and admirable union with Jesus and Mary. Assist us in our daily work in order that we, Catholic artisans, may also see in it an effective means of glorifying God, of sanctifying ourselves, and of being a useful member in the society in which we live. These should be the highest ideals for all our actions. O dearest protector, obtain for us from the Lord humility and simplicity of heart, love for our work and kindness toward our fellow laborers, conformity to God's will in the unavoidable trials of this life, together with joy in bearing them recognition of our specific social mission and a sense of responsibility, the spirit and discipline and prayer, docility and respectfulness toward superiors, the spirit of brotherhood toward our equals, and charity and indulgence with our dependents. Accompany us in times of prosperity when the opportunity is given for an honest enjoyment of the fruits of our labors. Sustain us in our hours of sadness heaven seems to be shut in our regard, and even the very tools with which our hands toil appear to rebel against us. Grant that in imitation of thee, we may keep our eyes fixed on our mother Mary, thy dearest spouse, who, as she spun silently in a corner of thy shop, would let the sweetest smile course over her lips. Besides, may we never take our eyes off Jesus who was busily occupied with thee at the carpenter's bench, in order that we, in like manner, may lead on earth a peaceful and a holy life, a prelude to the life of eternal happiness that awaits us in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Sante Joseph, protector noster, Ora pro nobis, Sancte Joseph, protector noster, Ora pro nobis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.